Hi everyone, my name is Marta Mama and I'm here to explain you all the references about Drag Race España, All Stars. Somos las reinas del hachazo que no se van a coronar. So here we are, finally the finale. Wasn't that exciting? Yay! So I'm sorry there was no episode last week for the reunion. I was going to make it, but there was literally nothing to talk about. I just was going to say, yeah, and she said this, and she says this, and Paquita looked gorgeous, and that's all. So I just, it, there wasn't a lot of input that I could give to the conversation. So yeah, sorry for that. Before we start, I wanna thank all these lovely people and all of you in general for being here with me. It really means a lot. This like season three and All Stars one have been tough. They have been difficult, but I truly enjoy being able to explain certain things about the, you know, the culture, the folklore, the art, the, I don't know, the food we eat, the things we say. Uh, I just think that part is very fun. And I'm very happy I got to know of some amazing drag queens as well, even though the seasons were the thing I enjoyed the most. Um, there were some very, very cool drag queens in them and they have become some of my favorite drag queens of all times very, very fast. So yeah, it's not all bad and it, this has finished finally. So let's do this, okay? One more time, one more time. Okay, the episode starts, Poopy Poison has just left and everyone is in the workroom and they're all making out. Again, I said this many episodes ago, this is the season, this is the franchise where everyone is making out with everyone. Why? For absolutely no reason whatsoever. But yeah, I'm kind of jealous to be honest. Like, and oh, I didn't know if you guys clocked this, but in Spanish, making out, we say eating each other's mouth. So they're all eating each other's mouths and yeah they're like talking we get to know that Sedless was going to eliminate poopy poison as well and she brings up the fact that poopy poison eliminated onyx and that she even well you know she's being kind of like huh. and she brings up sagittaria again we are in the finale it's the four finalists sagittaria hasn't been here for weeks and weeks and weeks and we're still talking about sagittaria this is just like poor taste. Some people have to learn how to win and leave things in the past. Just like, I don't know, Sagittaria is also, I understand she is a little bit intense when she thinks something, She's she gets there in the zone and it takes her a while to stop thinking about that sometimes. Like on Twitter, like she's still, she's still spilling on Twitter right now. But um, Sedless is like crazy in this episode, right? Is, is it me? Is it me? Have we ever seen in any season where they're still talking about the girl that left four episodes ago because she was bitter, whatever? It doesn't matter who it was. Like we have seen, I don't know, I should have been Black China with Nina Bonina Brown. We have seen everything and no one, like once they leave, just close that book turn a new leaf and just enjoy that you are winning and not the other person. I don't know. I don't know. This is what we have. So yay. Oh, and uh, Samantha doing an impression of Poopy Poison. Uh, 10 out of 10. Amazing. Because we did see Poopy Poison making an impression of Samantha, but the other way around is also very, very funny. These two queens are so talented with this. It's just 10 out of 10. One of the favorite, my favorite moments from the episode, uh, Samantha doing an impression of Poopy Poison. Okay, so we get to know that the full panel of judges are gonna be a part of the episode. And I was thinking, like, I, I kind of knew that it was going to be some type of musical act or whatever, but wouldn't it be cool if this was a makeover challenge? Like, because it's four and the panel of judges are four, like somehow, I know, many of the panel of judges are already drag queens and it would be really weird but I really liked in the US when they did it with like the crew 
you know, when they use like people that they have been working with, I think that's kind of cute. I would have loved if this was a makeover, but of course you're not going to have a makeover for the finale, but I don't know. I just thought that would be cute, but it's kind of a makeover. It's just not the queens that are not responsible for that, but the four judges are going to be getting into drag and they're going to perform a revista. We have spoken many times about revista. Is this type of like cabaret um, that was very, very popular in like theater, you know? So it's just a mixture of like burlesque and musical theater, but with a lot of like innuendos and double entendre that was very, very popular th during the whole 20th century. And remember that there was a lot of censorship around that time. So what you could do and the power of the double entendre was something very, very important. And yeah, La Revista was also where most like drag queens, transvestites as we called them then, uh, would start performing and that, that was one of the places where they were allowed to perform in order to survive, right? So it's a beautiful genre and it's a beautiful thing that they pay homage to this genre in the whole season, honestly, because we've seen a lot of things about Revista. So yeah, I'm excited about that. And then it's like, they're all playing in the workroom, right? Los Javis are trying on their high heels and they're slipping and blah, blah, blah. And they jump from playing in the workroom with the judges to the act. And I understand that there's a limited time, but in general, the rhythm of this episode was all over the place. It felt so slow in some fragments of the episode, but so rushed for others. Like we didn't see any preparation for Revista, we didn't see any, you know, we usually see a lot of the behind the scenes, but the behind the scenes that they wanted to give us was something like very staged and not, I don't know. I don't know, you understand what I mean? Yeah. So for this Revista, remember, combine musical theater and like burlesque. Um, we have Supreme being amazing. She is, you know, she's, used to this, she can do this. Oh, and we have a shout out from Barbara Rey. When she was there as a judge, she left a little video message because she's the queen of La Revista. So super cool, super cool. We have Supreme, we have then the Eliminated Queens and their lyrics are kind of funny. Like we're just here because they needed like more people to fill up the scene, but we don't care who wins. And uh, it, it was fun, it was meta. It was meta, right? Meta drag. Then we have the finalist, of course, and the judges. Okay, we have to talk about the judges. Of course, Supreme, we have seen in drag once or twice. Of course, Anna Locking, we have seen in drag once or twice. Like every episode. I don't know why they... Uh, there was no real transformation, real, really, for Anna. I think she's in drag more, you know... It's more drag what she usually does than what she did for that episode, to be honest. But I love to see her flying. She's like, what, 53 years old? Something like that. Something crazy. Uh, props to her. Um, flying in the air with these two hunks. Like, okay, okay, love it. Let's talk about Los Javis, okay? Um, or let's not talk about Los Javis, maybe. Yeah, maybe that'd be better. Let's not talk about them. But actually, like, Ambrosi was kind of giving. She was kind of giving. Okay, and shout out to this filter on the camera. They, it looks like they took a whole glove of Vaseline and they spread it through the lens of the camera and then they filmed La Revista. Wasn't that cute? <laughs> it makes you feel like you're in a, some type of dream, right? It's all very, like, dreamy. I thought it was so campy that filter i don't know i don't know it was it was it was cute it was cute it was cute it was a little bit cringy too the whole revista but it was cute then we get to well we know that from the beginning of the episode we're going to have a lip sync battle and it's going to be two against two and then the two winners and then there will be a winner yay and then they line them all up and that's you know the one episode where they say 
amazing things about each one of them. Okay, on the one hand, uh, Supreme Deluxe was everything I needed her to be. She was, again, one of the girls. And she actually says, like, I'm speaking from here, but I, but I see it from there, from where you are. So, I don't know. I really appreciate when she is just one of the girls, to be honest. I think that's what made us love Supreme Deluxe. Like, she was one of them. Um, she even talks about, like, working conditions here in Spain and how horrible it is to work as a drag queen and want to make a living out of it. Uh, props to her, props to being human. She got emotional again. Like, she was one of the girls and she was pushing for the girls. The things that she had to say about each one of them, it's like, sit less. Um, usually we tell people that you have to learn how to lose, but you really know how to win. And I'm like, this is probably the example of the worst winner. Like, not because she won bad. It's like she, she couldn't accept that she was winning and she kept like punching down to Sagittaria, who wasn't even in the competition. Is that being good at winning? Um, because what I feel she's talking about is like sportsmanship, right? Like win gracefully and show your grace, right? And I think that's the one thing that we have been missing. We have had amazing looks and outstanding performances from Red Settlers, but we have had a lot of pushing down to the other girls, right? Uh, so no graceful sportsmanship, no, none of that. But yeah, that's the positive quality that uh, Supreme says about drag settlers is that she's from the Canary Island. And Canary Island drag is amazing. And drag settlers is from the Canary Island. And they talk about the, that one look with the birds. And yeah, that's the positive. And it's like Jurigi, they say, oh, the positive thing about Jurigi other than, yeah, amazing looks and the star quality is that she's trans. And it's like kind of weird, like kind of weaponizing. Like, yeah, you're the Canary Island, you're the trans girl, you're the bad, you're the bad. <laughs> like, it's, uh, I don't know. It felt kind of weird sometimes, okay? Of course, Samantha is the story, the redemption throughout this season. Uh, it made you, this season made you like want Samantha to win and yeah a lot of people didn't expect to be in that boat but yeah I thought I don't know Samantha had her complete and total redemption and it's funny because they keep <laughs> they keep like treating this in every season in every all-star season like the queen got better because she went to drag race and she learned a lot in her season. And then when she went out to the world, she was able to make a lot of money because she had been on Drag Race and because uh, she knows a lot more. So when she comes, that's the redemption storyline that we have in our heads, right? Uh, it would be interesting to know how much of that is real. You know, uh, I think it's like the American dream or things like that, like fictions that we believe in our minds and that we have to repeat in order for the world to still make sense. But they're fictions. <laughs> it, that's not the reason. Like, I don't think that Samantha has learned incredibly a lot of things to drag race specifically. Uh, maybe thanks to the tour, probably. That was a lot. And maybe she knows more people and she has more contacts. Uh, that is true, but yeah, she was, she was this good of a drag queen in her season and now, or like Ornella, Ornella, her season hadn't even aired, you guys, do you really think that drag race, being in drag race has really changed Ornella as a performer, she has been working for 15 years, whatever, it's not drag race, and maybe it made her more resilient, because you judges Hey, Ornella, no mind. Maybe it's that, but yeah, well, that's my rant. Thank you for coming. So we also get a final runway with all the eliminated queens as well. I really like this. Uh, they also did it for the reunion, like lost looks that never aired because they were eliminated. And in this season, it was like their finale look. 
they all looked very good, right? None of them, not even the contestants looks, looked super finale looks. You know what I mean? Like, wow, finale looks. But well, uh, shout out to Paquita. She looked, uh, wow, wow. And she just, I, lo I love how she walks, like all confident with her head held high. And then she kicks her skirt. Like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. These type of skirts with train are very typical of like Andalucía flamenco, flamenco dresses and all that. And being able to move gracefully with them and how to present them is a whole art in itself. So I thought that was super cute. I just love her. And then we have this roulette thing that says that the first lip sync is going to be Judy G against Samantha. Was it? Yeah, Judy G against Samantha with the song La Reina del Pop by Lorena Van Gogh. And the second uh, lip sync is going to be Ornella versus Setlas with Yo No Soy Esa by Mary Trini, but it's a different version. Yes. So the first lip sync, uh, it was kind of weird. I think it's the first time I see Yuri G lip syncing standing up. And yeah, this song was a classic from like the early 2000s. Everyone that is in like their late 30s like me, we have grown up listening to, listening to this music. Uh, it was kind of fun. It was kind of fun. And yeah, they did that. It was kind of a little bit boring as a lip sync in my opinion. I know that they were really trying very, very hard, but it was kind of boring. And once we are in this position, like, you know who is going to, like the lip sync, the, the roulette thing was never going to pair up Setlas and Samantha in a semi-final, right? You know what I mean? It was not going to happen. We all knew kind of like the two people with the most wins were going to be the ones that were battling it up in the end, in the last round, right? So I really think it didn't matter what Judici did. Judici seemed a little bit over it for the whole thing, right? For the whole season, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I'm happy for them. It wasn't just an extraordinary lip sync. Second lip sync, Setlas against Ornella. Um, in my opinion, Ornella very, very obviously won that lip sync. I think it's obvious. We don't have to talk about it. But, you know, you have to take into consideration how well the Queen have done throughout their season. But they don't say it. They should say it. I think they should say it. Like, this was very close because one did amazing, but the other one did better. And there's, like, we have to take into account not only this lip sync, but the whole season. They usually say it, right? And the finales. They didn't this time. Uh, the winner was said less. Okay. And then in the final round, that's when they come with their super cool new outfits. And yeah, Samantha was looking beautiful in this purple fantasy, but it looked like she had like a huge backpack of feathers. And like the most impressive and expensive thing of her look was like behind her for some reason. Uh, but she looked amazing. It's, that is absolutely true. And Setlas was looking like a Fabergé egg. Cute. She looked a little bit like this look of La Grande Dame. Uh, it's inspired by, obviously, this design over here, as Paradis Paradise has taught me. If you don't follow Paradis Paradise, he talks about fashion in drag. So go leave him a follow on Twitter or whatever. And yeah, it was very impressive. Was this the same thing that she had in the mirror, the infamous mirror look? Uh, well, maybe. Lip sync. Eloise de Tino Casal. This is a... Uh, this is an anthem. This is very important for, uh, I don't know, for a certain sector of Spain. This song is very, yeah, but it's also a weird song to lip sync to because of the rhythm, because of the BPMs. I don't know what it is, but it's a weird tempo. It's a weird song to lip sync to. Uh, I didn't understand everything that was happening. I thought that Samantha didn't explode because it's a weird song to explode to she just kept turning around in the same part of the thing and then Setlas did something that I didn't find very tasteful that is going to the 
judges table and just jumping up from there so it for me it's very similar to if you stand blocking the other queen so the judges cannot see the other queen it, they, I understand that the wow factor and I understand all that but um I don't know I don't know maybe I'm being biased again I don't know the lip sync was won by Stetlas that is true through and through it doesn't matter how you see it it's not a matter of perspective it was won by Stetlas but that part of going onto the judges table and jumping up from there I think was unnecessary the song didn't call for it I don't know that's what I think so uh, the crown and the scepter and all these things come out it's time to get to know the winner and in a big turn of events the winner of Drag Race España All-Stars is Drag Setlas! Wow! What? Uh, the big turn of events is that when she got her crown and her scepter, she didn't say, uh, you see, Sagittaria, I was going to win, I told you, or something like that. That's what, that's what I thought he was going to do. So, <laughs> uh, Drag Setlas was definitely the best at drag in this season, or maybe one of them. She obviously spent a lot of money and effort. She has a lot of talent and she is the correct winner for the season. I am just a little bit angry at the fact that uh, they have, I don't know. It was not fun to watch because you already knew what was going to happen, what they wanted you to think. And anytime it happened with the last season, for me, the if you look at the four seasons of drag race the three seasons and the all-stars there are things that season one and season two had in common and season three and season and all-star season also had a lot of things in common season one and season two were big success season three and all-stars were not a big success um you know they had a new crew and i think that the new production team their intention was good obviously they wanted to do something amazing with the franchise of course and I know a lot of people that work in the production and I know their values and what they think and all of that but they were trying to do something with a narrative that did not work we know that as viewers when they try to convince us of something they either do that very 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 well and very carefully and very seamless or we feel offended we feel like oh they're going to try to push this narrative down my throat that is not going to work and that is what happened in season three and that's what happened in all stars in my opinion either way <laughs> we got to know amazing things we got to see amazing looks even from the queens that were eliminated like this amazing look from onyx from the hell infierno runway uh, we got to learn a lot more about some of our favorite drags like Jurigi, like Ornella. I said this on Twitter and I'm going to repeat it. If we ever needed someone to replace Supreme Deluxe, I think Ornella would be the obvious choice and the best choice. And not only that, I think that her run in Drag Race has transcended her results. Like, it doesn't matter if she ended up first or second or last, or it doesn't really matter. Uh, I think that if Supreme was competing in Drag Race, she wouldn't win Drag Race. That doesn't mean that we think any less of Supreme. It's just Drag Race is like that, you know? So I think that I'm super happy getting to know more about Ornella. Shout out to Ornella buzzing off all her hair in the last episode in the confessional. You look amazing as a bold queen, bold bitches forever. Yes, I think it was a, a season that happened. It was something that we got through together. I was happy to see some of the things. I was super happy of being able to explain a lot of references to you guys. Uh, that makes me very happy. But yeah, as a season, as someone that has watched a lot of Drag Race, probably too much, this was not 
one of the best seasons in the history of Drag Race. And that's what I loved about season like one and two, for example. For me, I was very proud to say that these are probably some of the best seasons ever of any franchise. So yeah. So that's all I wanted to talk about. It's not not a lot, right? It was like pretty straightforward. Rhythm was weird. Setless one. Um, Ornella who? Yuriji who? Like we don't care. Uh, everyone in Spain, if you want to know, was Team Samantha. Not everyone, of course. There's a huge feud and uh, like a battle on Twitter between people from Canary Islands, of course, defending Drag Setless, and like everyone else that has watched the season. And you know, there's stu stupid feud, stupid dumb drama. Like, as I said in season three, as I say now, winning doesn't isn't always the best thing that can happen to you sometimes you win maybe like Pitita, but that doesn't mean that you're going to have this amazing career afterwards you're gonna have the money in the bank but sometimes it's better not to win and make that money in a different way and having a very interesting important and recognized career than just winning the money you know so yeah that's my final reflection for today uh, again, thank you very, very much for being here with me. If you want to support my channel in any way, uh, this is my PayPal account. Thank you so much for being here, for still being here. Uh, season four is coming. I don't know when exactly, but season four is coming. I don't know if I'll be able to upload things in the meantime, but if you have any suggestions about things you wanted me to talk about, just drop it down below. Maybe we can do a little something, something. Uh, and yeah, so um, thank you so much for being here. I love you guys and I hope you stay queer, okay? Stay queer and be nice on Twitter. Stay queer. Love you.